your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. And it's your testimony to healing and regeneration, no matter what your health challenge may be. If you have questions about prescription drugs, medications, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, something you may have heard about or read about in the news, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have a success story you'd like to share, we love those. Or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. If you're interested in purchasing any of the longevity products, excuse me, any of the longevity products that you're advertised on the program or recommended on the program, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com, brightsideben.com. You can also uh, check out uh, my blogs, criticalhealthnews.com, and also pharmacistben.com. If you're interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel or or Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, Truth Serum, or Truth Balm. If you're interested in high quality, high, high, highly active, 100% active, 100% active and functional ingredients, that's all we put in our truth treatment products. No preservative, no wax, no fillers, no oils, no silicon, no nothing that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. If you're interested in checking those out, truthtreatments.com. We also have a, a skin health blog up at truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a special look at our retinol 5% gel, 5% retinol. You're not going to see that one anywhere. Retinol 5% gel, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about the ketogenic diet and fats and skin and skin hormones. Last we spoke, we were talking about one of my all-time favorite superfoods, flax seeds, flaxseed fiber, wonderful source of fiber, wonderful source of nutrition in general, and cheap. That's one of the best things about flax, flax seeds is that it is cheap, 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 two bucks a pound for this wonderful, I mean, really incredible source of nutrition. The humble little flaxseed, you look at a little flaxseed, man, it looks tiny, 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 but man, is that tiny, tiny little size belie a powerhouse of nutrition. Flaxseeds have been around for a really long time, pretty much as long as we've been farming. There have been flax, there's been flax cultivation. Stone Age people used to cultivate, cultivate flax. In fact, I'm pretty sure flax is one of the first plants to be cultivated. There's uh, evidence that it was uh, the beginnings of agriculture were associated with flax some 10,000 years ago. Flax, there's evidence that uh, people were farming flax 8,000 B.C. It was used to make clothes. The word linen is derived from the scientific name for flax, linum. And ancient ancient Egyptians, ancient people in general, used to use linen to, Egyptians used it to wrap mummies. It was considered more valuable than gold. It's in the Bible. Joseph wore garments of of flax linen. I think the coat of many colors may have been made of linen in uh, in the uh, book of uh, Exodus. Hail was one of the ten plagues, and hail was said to have destroyed Egyptian flax fields. And also in the book of, uh, I'm pretty sure in the book of Exodus, Jewish high priests were, to- were uh, supposedly wore linen robes. In the book of Isaiah, linen is mentioned as a source of lamp wicks. In the New Testament, Jesus was adorned in linen when he was put in the tomb. 
Hippocrates, the father of medicine, talked about flax as being able to relieve intestinal disorders, constipation, which it most certainly does. In the Middle Ages, flax was used to bake bread. It was a major crop in the United States until the invention of cotton. Cotton made flax, cotton kind of made flax obsolete as a, as a textile, but from that point, flax just moved on to being a source of, uh, a source of oil for paints and for varnishes and for polishes, although farmers have always used flax as a cheap source of nutrition for their livestock. It's, a, it's very high in protein. Somewhere in the 1980s, a lady named Dr. Joanna Budwig, some of you may have heard of her, she popularized the use of flaxseed oil. We're going to be talking about the Budwig protocol for cancer here in the coming days. She talked about using flaxseed oil, which is a wonderful source of omega-3 fats. Omega-3 fats, as we've said, are super duper high in electrical energy. And Dr. Budwig recommended using flaxseed oil to take advantage of this high energy omega-3 fats, along with cottage cheese, to create this electrically activated food, the sulfur in the cottage cheese. Cottage cheese is a source of the amino acid methionine, which is rich in sulfur. And Dr. Budwig talked about m mixing her flaxseed oil with cottage cheese to create a little battery between the, a little electrical, a, a, kind of an electrical system between the, the omega-3s and the flaxseed oil and the sulfur in the, in the uh, uh, cottage cheese. And she talked about creating this little electron battery that she suggests anyway, and she's a pretty sophisticated biochemist. She suggested that this could help energize sick cells and prevent cancer or even reverse cancer. Flax seeds are a tremendously valuable source of minerals, selenium and zinc and calcium and iron. They're a great source of hard to find vitamin E. You'll get B vitamins in flax seeds. You'll get vitamin K in flax seeds. You'll even get a little bit of vitamin C, not much, but a little tiny trace of vitamin C in flax seeds. And of course, they are one of nature's best sources of omega-3 fats, the real omega-3 fats, not the, not the derivative omega-3 fats that you get in fish oil. Those are valuable, DHA and EPA, but the parent omega-3 fat, ALA, that is found in abundance in flax seeds. In fact, flat, that may be nature's best source of ALA omega-3 fats. And as mentioned, flax seeds are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful source of protein. Over 20, maybe 25% of flax seeds is protein. That's a lot of protein, folks. If you, if you eat two tablespoons of flax seed, you're going to get as much protein as you'll get from an egg. And they're especially high in building amino acids, the specific amino acids for stimulating growth hormone and for building connective tissue, arginine and glycine. They're also a good source of what are called the BCAAs, the branched chain amino acids. Bodybuilders know all about the BCAAs. They're very important for building muscle. And the BCAAs are also very satisfying. They have appetite suppressant effects. You guys, are you getting the sense that these flax seeds are pretty darn important? All for two bucks a pound. Two bucks a pound. You'll also get uh, an amino acid called phenylalanine and another one called tyrosine. These two amino acids act like natural antidepressants. They're natural thyroid medicine. They're natural adrenal health boosters. They're natural energizers. They're natural appetite suppressants. This stuff's amazing, huh? Flax seeds, two bucks a pound. Get the golden ones. Personally, I like the taste of ground up flax seeds and I put them on, I mix them up with all kinds of stuff. I, I make a pudding with it with uh, almond, almond milk, a little coconut milk. They're nutty and they're crunchy. They can add texture to, flavor, uh, to uh, flavor your salads or you can add them to yogurt or smoothies. You can use them like breadcrumbs. To, uh, if you mix them up with a little bit of egg, you can make like a, a flax seed egg wash and you can coat chicken and salmon with it. And that, that, it's going to really bump up the protein too on your, not only is it going to taste great, it's going to bump up the protein and the, and the mineral value of your chicken and your salmon. You can add it to just sprinkle some in an omelet to add some crunch or tuna salad. And you'll be getting all your, your nutrition, your vitamins, your minerals, your fats, and your protein. Uh, really hard to duplicate the value of flax seeds. All right, we'll take a break and come back with more good health information on the bright side. Don't go away.
back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations, ingredients, if you have a success story you'd like to share, skin health issues that you'd like help with, we can we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Take a special look at our Retinol 5% Gel, also our Truth Serum and Truth Balm, both made with lots and lots and lots of premium vitamin C. Only active and functional ingredients in all our Truth Skin Health products. Never any preservatives or fragrances or oils or silicon or anything your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. They're ideal for sensitive skin. Even the Retinol 5% Gel. Even the Retinol 5% Gel, folks, you can use on delicate skin. Most folks don't have any irritation, and that's a miracle if you know anything about retinol or retinoic acid. Retinol 5% gel. If your skin's super duper, duper sensitive, you might want to be a little bit careful, but everybody benefits from a little bit of retinol once a week or twice a week. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so flax seeds, love the stuff. You can do all kinds of things. You just be creative with your flax seeds. Put them in yogurt or use them as breadcrumbs or mix them in a tuna salad or put them in your burrito. I mean, they're just amazing, amazing, amazing source of good nutrition, protein and vitamins and, and minerals. And of course, you get that all important fiber for keeping your intestines clean. That's where flax seeds really shine. Yes, they're a great source of wonderful, hard to find omega fats and protein and, and minerals and, and amino acids, but they're really, their claim to fame is their, their uh, fiber benefits for helping keep your intestines clean. If you are constipated, folks, a little bit of flax seeds can go a long, long way to keeping your regular flax seeds every day. They're also important for the good bacteria that live in the colon, the probiotics that are important for, for on, their, on their own, probiotics for your immune system and for your digestive system. Probiotics feed on the flax fiber. So you eat the fiber, it goes into your intestine, and the bacteria will feed on the fiber. And as they're feeding on the fiber, they will release a special fat called butyric acid. Butyric acid is one of the most incredible, one of the most important and valuable of all the fats. It's very, very underappreciated. Most people haven't even heard of this stuff. But butyric acid is like f fuel for the cells that line your intestine. Butyric acid acts like gasoline to fuel all the chemical reactions that intestinal cells do. They keep butyric acid acts to support the health of the intestine and the intestinal cells. And bonus, butyric acid also has mental health properties and mood enhancing properties. This is all coming from the flax fiber, from the, from the action of the bacteria on the flax fiber. They release this butyric acid. Technically, they call it a short-chain fatty acid. We've talked about this in the past. An SCFA. Remember, fats come in three sizes, short, medium, and large. The medium fats are so important for the ketogenic diet. The short fats are so important for your digestive health. And butyric acid is my favorite of all the short-chain fatty acids because of its ability to put you in a good mood. A lot of folks will notice that when they take probiotics, their mood changes. And there is a really, really important relationship between bacteria and brain health and mental health and mood issues. And one of the reasons this is important is because these bacteria can feed on fiber. A combination of bacteria and fiber can do incredible things for brain health, for mental health. If you're going ketogenic diet, butyric acid can actually act as a source of fuel. If you want to do the ketogenic diet, butyric acid is a wonderful, wonderful way to help you kind of coast into the low calorie aspect of the ketogenic diet that sometimes people have a, a, problem, a problem with. The ketogenic diet being a high fat, uh, zero or, or close to zero, uh, uh, zero percent carbohydrate diet. Some people have a problem with that. Well, butyric acid can be a source of non-sugar energy and in combination with the flax fiber, with the, with the filling nature of the flax fiber, it can kind of get you over the hump if you're trying to fast. Or if you're just trying to suppress your appetite, butyric acid is a great appetite suppressant and on top of everything else, it's great for your mood. It's part of a neurotransmitter, a brain chemical called GABA. Some of you may have heard of this. GABA, G-A-B-A, has been used to treat seizure disorders. It's, it's been used to treat brain issues from autism to schizophrenia. You can use it for insomnia. It's an antidepressant. And guess what? GABA is gamma amino butyric acid. It's a form of butyric acid. 
GABA also has anti-inflammatory properties, and it also fights colon cancer. This is all related to the, I'm sorry, butyric acid has anti-inflammatory properties and fights colon cancer. And this is all related to the fact that gut bacteria can feed on the fiber. It's like, a, it's like the, a gift from the gut bacteria in return for us feeding the fiber. We feed the bacteria fiber, they feed us butyric acid. And then fiber also helps clean the blood. Flax fiber has, uh, is like a blood tonic. It cleans out blood fats. It cleans out blood cholesterol. It supports bile. You guys, are, this is all from flax. This is all for two bucks a pound. If you're not doing flax on a regular basis, you are truly missing one of nature's most powerful and important sources of good nutrition. You can use fats, uh, flax seeds topically on your skin and hair. The, the omega-3 fats also will give you benefits for moisturization. You can make your own flaxseed mask by mixing, uh, mixing in some yogurt and some honey and creating a paste with some flax seeds. The amino acids in the flax seeds, the omega-3 oils, will get, and the vitamin E will give you some topical skin moisturizing properties. That is a lot of nutritional value for ground up, from ground-up seeds that cost you two bucks a pound. But there's more, as they say. Flax seeds also contain substances called lignans, which have anti-cancer benefits, particularly against breast cancer and prostate cancer. Lignans are a type of plant estrogen. They're, they're like a weak estrogen, they call them, or a phytoestrogen. And it may help the body produce a less active form of estrogen. And it may block the body's, uh, it may block cells from, from using the real active or toxic estrogen. So it can reduce uh, the risks of certain estrogen-dependent dependent cancers. Breast cancer for one, uterine cancer, uh, ovarian cancer. And lignans on their own have anti-tumor properties. There's research that uh, suggests that lignans may reduce the aggressiveness of tumors that are already there. There's other research that suggests that lignans may support chemotherapy drugs like tamoxifen. And it's not just women. Prostate cancer is also estrogenic, folks. And it turns out that lignans from flax seeds also may have benefits against prostate cancer. So... Because of the relationship between prebiotic and prebiotics and good bacteria, that is supporting the prebiotics support the environment for probiotics. They make uh, they act like food for probiotics. They make probiotics healthier. You want to do your ground up seeds. You want to do your flax seeds with your nightly essence, and then you're going to really bump up the uh, the digestive health benefits of the night, uh, the nightly essence, which is my all time favorite nutritional probiotic. You want to do it a couple hours before or maybe a couple hours after you do other supplements because the fiber can tie up minerals, and that's where we come to phytic acid, phytates. Fiber, as wonderful as it is, seed fiber, as wonderful it is as it is, and I hope you got the idea that flaxseed fiber is an amazing, amazing source of nutrition, it does have those phytates in it. Not that that's a bad thing. There is a lot of misunderstandings about phytates. You hear all kinds of negative stuff about phytic acid, but guess what? Phytic acid may actually be a nutritional supplement on its own. Phytic acid may actually get you some nutritional benefits on its own. Yes, there are some anti-nutrient properties, and that's why you want to take your flax seeds or do your fiber separate from your minerals. But phytic acid has got some interesting health benefits, and we're going to talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We have lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you're on hold, hang on. I just want to say a couple more things about phytic acid and phytates. We'll talk about it a lot tomorrow, probably for the next couple of days. They've been in the news lately. But they're not all that bad. In fact, I think it's personally, I think it's much ado about nothing. Yeah, you're going to tie up a little bit of minerals, but make sure you just take more minerals. That's not a reason to avoid phytates, uh, phytate containing foods like flax seeds. And there's also strategies you can use for decreasing the phytates in foods. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And there's also strategies that are built into your body that may help you process phytic acid and phytates, especially in your digestive tract. We will con uh, we'll continue. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk about that one tomorrow as well. From the journal Translocational Psychiatry, new study supports the link between omega-3 supplementation and reduction in depression. Interesting. New meta-analysis published in Trans 
uh, translational psychiatry supports the link between intake of two specific kinds of omega-3 fats, not the, kinds, not the kind that's in flaxseed, but the kind that are in fish, EPA and DHA, omega-3 fats that are not necessarily essential, but still very, very important. According to this article, or meta-analysis, that's when they do an analysis of other analysis, they found that uh, this was a, a done on 13 studies with 1,233 participants. They found that Folks who took more, uh, particularly EPA, had better antidepressant scores than folks who didn't. Omega-3 fats are super important brain health fats, and this is one of the reasons why fish is considered brain food. Here's another one. This one is about the microbiome, the, the universe of bacteria that live in our gut. Microbiome associated with severe caries, that's cavities, in Canadian children. How interesting is that? Gut bacteria affect our teeth. Gut bacteria affect our mouth. Well, we got all kinds of bacteria living in our mouth. That kind of makes sense. Also, gut bacteria are very important for helping the body process calcium, that all-important mineral. You know, you can't just take calcium and expect to get calcium benefits. Periodically, there'll be reports in the news about how calcium supplementation is associated with more heart disease, and doctors will tell you to be careful with your calcium supplements. Well, what they're missing is the fact that it's not just the nutritional supplements you take, it's how you absorb and process those nutrients, and as it turns out, Good bacteria, uh, uh, probiotic bacteria, the, the microbiome is important for helping the body process calcium. Just another way the digestive system is involved in all kinds of health issues, even seemingly uh, separate, uh, separate parts of the body like the teeth. Yes, the digestive tract, the intestine affects how healthy our teeth will be. Tomorrow we'll talk about the relationship between phytic acid and the teeth. Interesting. Phytic acid actually plays a role in keeping teeth healthy as well. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, a health challenge you may be dealing with or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Santa Cruz, California, my home away from home. And talk to hey. Mike. What's up, buddy? How's How you going? doing? Good morning. It's going all right. Hey, um, I took a trip out of town and uh, got dehydrated. Um, I, re I have a condition, and I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, it, I've got uh, a pain in my kidney areas. Um, stones? Do you have a history of stones or anything? You know, I haven't before. I mean, there's been a couple of times when I got dehydrated, there's been this aching back there, but it's never been like this before. So I wasn't really able to sleep last night. I'd lay down. Oh, try that's to awful. Try to get comfortable, be comfortable for like three or four minutes, and then this uh, little bit of like waves of this aching would be there, and then also a correlating pain between uh, in the back of my knees. So I'm wondering. It could, yeah, it could, that's, that could be something called referred pain, where mm -hmm. a pain from one area of the body gets to, perceived as occurring as happening in another part of the body, and it could definitely be related to the kidney. Uh, are you got that ache, or what, how old are you, first of all? Fifty, and do you have a, what other health challenge? You got to have something else going on. You can't just have that. You, you know, I, I mean, gosh, I, I'm just a hard worker. I don't. I mean, whatever it is that's going on, I have It hasn't been officially diagnosed. I mean, I, I aches and pains, like general aches and pains, kind of thing. Um, a little bit sometimes, but how's the, how's the belly? Go? Did you notice that the belly starting to get a little bit, get a little bit of, of belly fat going on in the last ten years, say 10, 15 years? That's usually a sign of insulin resistance. Maybe, maybe are you wearing the same pants size as you did when you were 20? Uh, pretty close. I mean, I'm yeah. like 34 waist. I'm 6'5", 200 and like uh, 30. Okay. 30. Okay, so you're pretty you're pretty lean there. Well, here's the deal. Yeah. It does sound it does sound like kidney stones by your description. Yeah. It doesn't sound like you have any blood sugar, any significant blood sugar problems. But kidney stones don't occur in a vacuum, and they right. won't occur just from being dehydrated. Kidney stones uh -huh. are a sign that the body is not processing its minerals correctly. Usually associated with what I always say I always call dirty blood. Uh -huh. That means. 
That means the blood is starting to get sludgy. The kidneys, as you probably know if you've listened to this program, you know, we talk about it all the time, the kidneys are like a colander or spaghetti strainer for the blood. They filter the blood. Uh-huh. So we have big problems in this country with kidney disease. Big, big problems. It, it, it's class, you can classify it as an epidemic, and it's not yeah. because the kidneys are messed up. It's because the blood is messed up. Mm-hmm. And so when I think of kidney stones, I think of calcification and calcium building up in the blood, sugar building up in the blood, various acids building up in the blood, basically dirty blood. And that's yeah. usually associated with blood sugar issues. Now, it can also be linked to, to digestive health problems, uh, and you got to work on those too. So let me give you a couple strategies. First okay. of all, we're actually going to talk about kidney stones tomorrow and phytic acid. As it turns out, phytic acid can help attract calcium, chelate calcium, we say, and that can keep calcium out of the blood. And that might be some like a, a superficial remedy, but it's not going to affect your metabolic, the metabolic or chemistry causes that are causing the problem in the first place. So absolutely, you want, you're on the right track with water. You want to make sure you're well hydrated that can help dilute your blood I would be going as low sugar as I could I mean zero okay. tolerance even ketogenic if you can which is like 5% of your calories coming from from carbohydrates um, certainly desserts and soda pop and fruit juices and, and the super sweet stuff that's definitely verboten that's definitely out but even things uh-huh. like starchy foods you want to be careful with those as well if you have any digestive health issues you got to focus on those nothing will make the blood dirtier faster than leaky gut syndrome which is a, a, obviously a digestive condition so I, it doesn't sound like you have any notable digestive problems like blatant gas or diarrhea or loose stools or constipation, but kind of pay attention to that and see if you notice that there are certain foods that trigger a digestive response, and that can, cause, that can be associated with leaky gut syndrome, which can definitely cause dirty blood and, and kidney stones or any stones for that matter. Also, make sure you're t- uh, t- taking care of probiotics, getting the good bacteria for many reasons okay. we talked about in the last couple of days. If you're not on a probiotic supplement, Make sure you get on one, like the Biolumin Nightly Essence, and then make sure you're eating fermented foods. Make your own fermented foods or just go to the health food store and get sauerkraut and start to, you know, maybe even subsist on fermented foods for a day or two. See if that helps. See if that makes a difference. And also, if you're doing longevity... There's a wonderful product called the Swero V, which can help you go into a, a low-cal or, or a, a, a caloric-restricted diet because it will provide you with energy. It also has some probiotics in it. The Swero V, uh, you get, that's a Jordan Rubin product, and you get that from Longevity. Um, you can also use chelating agents, things that will attract, in addition to phytic acid, things that will attract calcium. NAC, NAC is great. Selenium is great. Hang on, Mike. i got a couple more okay. things to tell you about vitamin D. All right. It's also uh-huh. very important, so don't go away. And if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Mike in Santa Cruz about kidney stones. A couple more things I want to add to uh, what we just talked about, digestive, digestion and blood sugar issues and using chelating agents like okay. NAC and selenium. A couple other things you might want to consider, high doses of vitamin C. You can either get that uh, through the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, or you can also uh-huh. get straight vitamin C powder and do high. And by high doses, I'm talking maybe a couple of grams every few hours. The so one knock on vitamin C is may give you a little gas or bloating or some some kind of digestive discomfort. If that occurs, then go then cut back on your dose and just do a smaller dose, but more frequently. And then also, I don't know if you're familiar with sodium bicarbonate. Uh, baking, plain old baking soda has been used as a remedy for dealing with kidney stones. Um, Dr. Mark Circus, S-I-R-C-U-S, talks about this a lot. He's got a really cool ebook on sodium bicarbonate and its various uses. Uh, but it can also help with kidney stones. Uh, a lot of folks, a lot of uh, alternative practitioners believe in that. And I've seen, personally, I've seen some good results with that. Uh, maybe a quarter teaspoonful to a half a teaspoonful. Uh, in a glass of water once or twice a day. You don't want to do it too close to your foods. Sodium bicarbonate will neutralize stomach acid, and that's not a good thing. So uh, that might be something else that you want to consider. And then uh, let me see if there's anything else I could think of. A couple of questions, too. Yeah? Uh, What is NAC? NAC stands for N acetylcysteine. You can just call it NAC for short, and it's wonderful for chelating. It's, it's one of the all-time great detoxifying supplements. NAC is actually kept in emergency rooms as a way to detoxify the liver when people have drug overdoses, when they have aspirin or, or Tylenol o- overdoses, but you can get it at the health food store. It's great for people who are drinking alcohol, people on prescription drugs, but it also has some nice chelating properties that will magnetically attract 
calcium from the blood, excess calcium. Uh, also, okay. the mineral selenium has chelating properties. When I say chelation, that's a magnetic reaction that happens between substances and minerals. And uh, chelating, chelation therapy actually is a great strategy in general. And I'm talking intravenous chelation therapy that you get in a natural, in a, in a naturopath or in a doctor's office. But these are nutrients that can have chelating properties. Vitamin C also has some nice chelating properties. It's great for heavy metal toxicity. Great for cleaning the blood from all kinds of stuff and it also might be helpful for kidney stones okay I'm one last thing I'll tell you is vitamin D if you're not getting a, a good source of vitamin D the Sun or fish oil vitamin D is involved in calcium metabolism and that can help too go ahead okay. I'm sorry do you have uh, something else you, do you want to add something uh, just quickly um, it, what's the uh, for, for uh, dissolving stones is I was looking at a couple of gel cap products natural um, uh, Euroflow and uh, Renovive I, I'd have to see what was in them I don't know the brand name okay. Do you have them, okay. do you have them handy? You don't have them handy, um, do you? Uh, I do, but it's a list of ingredients. I don't want to take up too much time reading off. Yeah, of without – I'd have to see – I don't I don't really know the brand names. I, okay. I don't recognize those brand names, but I'd have to see what was in them. I, I imagine they're probably chelating agents is probably their strategy. Uh, okay. And, okay. Uh, and then uh, what about kombucha for probiotics or – Kombucha rocks, man. That's okay. awesome stuff. Okay. Yeah, I love Thank kombucha. You, okay, buddy. Have a, have a beautiful day, man. We'll talk soon. Thank Thanks. You. Okay, bye. Bye, Mike. Okay, another Mike in L.A. What's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side, Mike in L.A. Yes, Ben. Hey, um, hey. we're going to see you at the uh, show on Which show? April the 15th at, at the um, convention. Oh, in Anaheim. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, good deal. We've, I've been following yeah. you since I've been with Yensibity for about four years now. Okay, great. I've been with a lot of people. But I have one, one uh, gentleman. He's about um, 30, 30, 58 years old. Okay. He's 170 pounds, and he's got lung cancer. Oh, wow. And he took chemo, and he took uh, radiation, but then they gave him some uh, medication that now he urinates about 10 to 20 times a day. And oh, wh- he says how far that, along is his lung cancer? Uh, you know, stage three. Stage, stage three. three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For, uh, for the listeners, and that's... Stage one and stage two and st- uh, cancers, excuse me, cancer stage by stage one, two, three, and four. Three is uh, three is not the end stage, but it's getting to the end stage, which is st- stage four. Uh-huh. Uh, and he's 58 years old, you say? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So here's the deal with cancer. Uh, and by the way, what's the drug that he's taking? Do you know? I wrote it down, but I, I left it on the napkin at the restaurant. I don't remember. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. You see, here's a couple of things with chemotherapy and a couple of things. Uh, a couple of things stand out when it comes to chemotherapy and cancer. First of all, <laughs> chemotherapy present, puts a very, very, very powerful burden on the body. Number one, chemotherapy is designed to kill things. Okay, so just by its nature, chemotherapy is going to kill you. It's going to kill your cells. The theory is it'll kill the cancer cells a little bit faster than it kills you, but it doesn't matter. It's killing things. The second problem, so number one, you get the problem with the chemotherapy drug itself, putting a burden on the body. But then the second thing is your chemotherapy drug is going to require your body to to mobilize nutritional resources that are now not going to be available for living your life. So number one, the chemotherapy drug in and of itself is going to put a burden on the body. But number two, it's going to cause the body to mobilize nutrients to detoxify the chemotherapy. So you're going to run into a couple serious problems with chemotherapy from a nutritional deficiency standpoint. The issue is that doctors don't like the body to be strong if you're taking chemotherapy because their thinking is if you're too strong, the chemotherapy won't work. You follow me? So you can't tell the doctor that, oh my gosh, he needs his B vitamins, he needs his vitamin C, he needs his N-acetylcysteine, he needs his selenium because the doctor's going to say, no, that's going to count counteract the chemotherapy because they don't want the body to be too strong, which is only only a doctor can think this way. Now, is chemotherapy Uh necessary sometimes? Uh, Maybe it is, but from a logic perspective, it just doesn't make sense. You you follow what I'm saying? So doctors will say, don't take vitamin C because it'll counteract the chemotherapy because why? It makes the body too strong. I think my strategy, and, and I don't have cancer, so caveat 
you know, that's a caveat right there. I'm not dealing with it, but just as a healthcare professional, my strategy is you do want to make the body strong. You want to make it as strong as possible. In fact, that's the way to deal with cancer, not to fight the cancer necessarily, although at stage three, it's a little bit trickier because, you know, you might not have a lot of time, so you may need to kill the cancer using chemotherapy. But if you're dealing with early stages of cancer and maybe even stage three cancer, you want to make the body strong and powerful so it can take care of the cancer. Folks, the body fights cancer. It, the cells contain chemicals within them that kill cancer. The body is exquisitely prepared to kill cancer, but it needs raw materials to do its work. And so the way I look at it is if you have cancer is you want to make the body strong. You want to make it as strong as possible. And this is even more vital if you are on chemotherapy. That will help you with the side effects and the toxicity. How do you make the body strong? Well, there's lots of strategies. First of all, I don't want to say first of all, but one of the most important things is to keep your sugar intake down. Sugar presents the body with a major burden. In fact, all calories provide, uh, present the body with a burden that it, it di redirects resources away from fighting disease, away from building. So keeping sugar intake down to a minimum is vital in addition to the fact that sugar helps feed cancer. Cancer is a sugar feeder. So the first thing, or one of the first things I think about with cancer and making the body strong is keeping sugar down to a minimum. Go ketogenic. Read up or, or review our, our last couple of weeks on the ketogenic diet. Have them go ketogenic, which is a high fat, low sugar, moderate protein diet. Caloric restriction, appetite suppression. He, he already probably doesn't feel like eating, but keeping the calories down while he's getting his nutrients, the cron calorie restricted optimum nutrition diet can be helpful. Chicken soup, bone soup, super dense foods, nutrient dense foods that don't have a lot of caloric load on them, like, like bone soup. Vegetable juices, read up on the Gerson therapy, which is a vegetable juice anti-cancer diet using uh, a Vitamix to make sure you're you're getting the fibers. Um, uh, all around good nutritional supplement program that goes without saying the Healthy Start Pack, vitamin C has got some tremendous with a capital T anti cancer benefits and chemotherapy supporting benefits. No matter what you hear from your doctor, read up on it. Vitamin C and it has tremendous anti cancer value, although oral vitamin C at this point may not be as effective as intravenous vitamin C if he has access to intravenous nutrition. Intravenous glutathione, glutathione is the body's natural cancer fighter. You can also build your own glutathione with selenium and sulfur and high protein and an amino acid called glutamine. If you can do high protein, like whey protein is a good source of, uh, of glutathione. And then also anti specific anti-cancer substances like N-acetylcysteine, which we talked about earlier, NAC for short. You always want to take your N-acetylcysteine with selenium. If he's using the longevity products, get him on the Fucoid Z. And don't forget digestive health strategies, even something like digestive enzymes specifically pancreatic enzyme or pancreatin has got some wonderful literature associated with it. Uh, Google Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez in cancer. He's, he used pancreatic enzymes very successfully to treat cancer, but all digestive enzymes are going to have some anti-cancer properties. And of course, they're also going to help you digest your food. Probiotics and fermented foods can be helpful. Get them on the BioLumen Nightly Essence and make sure he's eating fermented foods. And then don't underestimate the importance of spiritual, mental, and emotional strategies as well. I know we talk all the time about nutrition, and we don't always talk enough about the spiritual and mental and emotional components of health, but with cancer, there's a huge mental and emotional and spiritual aspect, so making sure he's thinking correct thoughts and visualization techniques and relaxing the body as much as possible. Remember, the, the, the uh, parasympathetic, the relaxation nervous system is where healing takes place. So you got lots of wonderful strategies there. Good luck, Mike, and God bless you. I hope Hope everything works out with your friend. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you.